Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Delaney from the Drupal Association. I'm the Director of Development, and this is my co-host. Hi there folks, I'm Nathan Roach, the Marketing Director at Accelerant. And we're your hosts for the show, Beyond the Build, uh, Stories of Drupal Impact, where we are highlighting incredible Drupal use cases by ambitious site builders and end users. And I will say, audience, Nathan and I had a little bit of a summer break, so here we're back and we're bringing the energy, but who do we have on the show today, Nathan? We're, we're catching up, that's right. Well, we have Sean Keating from the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research and Jim Barnthouse from Specby. so let's welcome them to the show. Hey, Sean, Hello. Jim. Talk about oh, energy. You invited the right people. Good. It's nice to see you both. John, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining Thanks. us. Do you mind telling us how long you've been at the foundation and what you do there? Sure. Yeah, I'm the uh, VP of Digital Strategy at the foundation. I've been there for about 11 years. Um, my main responsibilities are over uh, our website um, and also some of our data systems. So, you know, platforms include Drupal, Salesforce, Domo, some fundraising platforms, and um, the way they're all integrated with each other. Great. How about you, Jim? Could you tell us about, about yourself and your role at SpecB? Sure can. Yeah. My name is Jim Barnhouse. I'm VP of uh, Sales and Marketing at SpecB. Uh, SpecB is a Drupal-only agency, and, uh, and you probably know us from our blogs. So a lot of people do. I do know you're from, I read your latest, I don't know if it's your latest, but uh, we were definitely sending the run around about DrupalCon Pittsburgh. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I did read that one. That was a good read. That I actually wrote that one personally, so I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> good. Thank you very much. It was good. Uh, well, do you mind? We So I first knew Jim and he told us about this project and how he works with the foundation. Do you mind going back a few years? Um, you've been there a long time, Sean. Uh, how did you get hooked up and connected with Spec B for this project and all your projects? Sure. Um, we started with, uh, with Drupal before we started with Spec B. So that was uh, around uh, the summer of 2021. We completed a project where we migrated our old website onto a Drupal platform. So we completely redesigned, completely rebuilt, um, decided to go with Drupal as being the enabling technology. Uh, later that year, we had some staffing changes that opened up some opportunities to work with different partners um, in the uh, in the Drupal community, and that was when uh, I put together an RFP, really mm. seeking out um, expert organizations that I think could work with my team um, and uh, match my team's workflow. Also, had a, a certain level of passion for the platform because, again, that matches the vibe for our, our organization. And we started there. Uh, soon afterwards, we started on our first project, which was a microsite. And we've been doing different projects ever since. Great. And on your website, we see that the Michael J. Fox Foundation has raised a billion dollars for research programs to date. Um, can you help us understand the importance of this platform, how that plays into it. And, and maybe you could speak a little bit about how Drupal has helped to enable this. Um, sure. I mean, Drupal definitely has helped to enable our website and our website is one of our um, biggest tools for accessing our community uh, and building our community and growing our community. So, you know, a stable website, one with a, uh, with a clear information architecture, one that is um, sound as far as UX principles go, and one that also enables people to find and do the things that they're trying to do when they try to do it. All of that is very important to us. Um, some of those things were more challenging for us before we moved over to Drupal, mainly because we were on a we were on a content management system that was mostly homegrown and and was showing its age. Um, but all of those things became improved when we both redesigned and rebuilt the site um, on Drupal. I mean, it, Drupal specifically, I think helps us, but in general, the rebuild was very important for us to, uh, 
to really enhance our online mission. Oh, that's awesome. So we see that the foundation is really big into open source. You have open source everything from data repositories, software, some experimental data. Could you go into the, did you have that before you moved to Drupal, anything in open source or is that new with Drupal? That's been something that's building, uh, that's built over the last few years. Um, and it's kind of uh, been organically growing on both sides of our organization. So we have a side of our organization that I'm deeply embedded in, and then we have a research side of our organization. We work very closely, but in, in some cases, um, choices for these types of things kind of happen in parallel. On the research side, they are uh, very uh, strong proponents of open science, which is a variant of open source philosophy uh, that's about uh, open access publications and open data repositories. And so they are very dedicated to, uh, to operating with that type of availability and transparency and openness. Um, from the point of view of the side of our organization that is most involved in our technology choices, we have a mix. We have proprietary products. We have open products. Um, it was not the front of my mind when I decided to, to go with Drupal that it needed to be open source. But I think what was in front of my mind was because it was open source, right? And what was in front of my mind was a large community accessible, giving us lots of opportunity to find the right developers versus small, closed, or even proprietary uh, communities just bound to single companies that gave us very few opportunities to, uh, you know, to make changes to the site, to enhance our capabilities when we need it, to have fine staffing, and so forth. And I think all of that is a byproduct of it being open source. And so that part was was really very important to me when we said, no, it really should be on Drupal. Sean, I have a follow-up question for that. Did you run into any resistance from internal folks who maybe didn't, it sounds like they all knew about open science. And so that was that an easy conversion and argument to make when you started doing Drupal on uh, open source things? Yeah, I mean, this going back a couple of years, maybe... Um, there was a little bit of pushback, but the pushback came more from some of the technical partners and consultancies that we were working with at the time that, that simply didn't have an exposure to Drupal. They, they were suggesting, again, other proprietary CMSs. Um, there was a bit of an investment that we had with, uh, with a different platform even a few years earlier than that. So there wasn't, there wasn't a full push against the concept of open source. Um, or, or the idea that open source was a problem in a way that other platforms couldn't be a problem. As, as a matter of fact, it's, I actually think it's, it's very much the opposite. But there was a little pushback of sort of like, okay, well, why do we want to do this, right? Why do we want to go with a platform that's been around for so long? Don't we want to be cutting edge, so forth and so on? And um, so I did have to push back a little bit against that and, and ultimately the argument of we're, we're not a software house, we, we don't have the resources to have a, a full staff of web developers, we're going to have to interface with the community, we wanna do things quick, we wanna do things agile, we wanna get the most functionality out of our investment as possible, really we're, we're going to need to go with a platform that has that type of footprint. So, so that, that one, that, that really convinced anybody who was doubting. So this, this passion for open source is really what led to Drupal being adopted as your platform um, of choice, but th there are other open source platforms. Did you consider any open source alternatives to Drupal? No, at the time I didn't. I was involved in a Drupal project from a, a position I was in, not with the foundation before this. Um, that was for a, a publishing company that I worked for for a while. And so... Um, you know, I, I knew of a lot of the things that we're talking about just kind of out of the box. Uh, I was really waiting for an opportunity to move us to Drupal, to tell you the truth. Uh, and, and it came up. So, so no, I didn't, I didn't investigate other open source ones. Again, uh, maybe I don't know enough about the marketplace. Drupal was kind of what I was looking for. And, and that was 
you know, that was the direction we went with. It's a man who knows what he wants. <laughs> exactly. It's something I you agree. can trust, you know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's all I get it. Wallowing in ignorance. <laughs> I like it. For any end user audience that's considering Drupal, there you go. Maybe you just don't need to look at another open source <laughs> alternative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just trust us. Trust I mean, us. I, think, I mean, to, to be Drupal fair, system. I think I was involved, not at the same level of, of that type of evaluation at the previous company. And there I didn't have as uh, a big of a voice in choosing the platform. Drupal was chosen by a number of other people that I worked with. So we did there go through the evaluation of other types of platforms, both opened and closed source. So by the time I arrived at the foundation, I was already, no, this is, this is the direction we should go in. Awesome. So Jim, how, um, when they approached you with this, they had already been on Drupal. Do you mind telling us a little bit about the project that you're working on right now? Yeah, right now the, the project we're working on, and uh, this is not, not totally launched yet, right? So we're pretty close, but uh, the, 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 this is really the first step towards uh, the Michael J. Fox Foundation having um, users be able to sign in and start interacting with the website from, a, from beyond just going to find information and then maybe coming back later. Right? It's, it's really a bookmarking uh, tool right now with a complete uh, login system and menu system and in folders and a way to be able to there's a lot of information on the Michael J. Fox Foundation website. And to be able to, to save some of those articles for later, uh, are, we believe is, is a big step forward to having people coming back more often. And this, like I said, this is the first step. There's, there's more stuff to come from this uh, that we, that, that I guess is some future thinking, right, Sean? Um, yeah, it's definitely something that we're just starting with, uh, giving people the ability to create profiles on our website, um, not really looking to gate the website in any way. We want to make sure that people get uh, any information they're looking for, but finding ways to give a more personalized experience, finding ways for us to understand more about uh, how people are coming to our website, what information they're looking for, and, and ultimately trying to improve their overall experience when they're on our site. Yeah, and this, and I got to say the the the, I think the hardest part about this project was that we just didn't nothing existed already on the Michael J. Fox Foundation that was like this, but we still had to follow those same brand guidelines, and we wanted the feel to feel natural to what the rest of the site was. We went through a, a UX design process um, that I was really really happy with. It it, uh, and it I think it's I think it's going to make it very easy. Uh, accessible, um, that Drupal does play a part in all of that sort of stuff. So uh, we're appreciative of the platform, especially as a Drupal-only company, we're appreciative of Drupal. Uh, but the, the the ability for it to be able to be molded into uh, the kind of user experience that we're really looking for at Michael J. Fox Foundation is really key. Now, you mentioned that there's this functionality that you're building in order to save content types so that you can come back later. So you're really looking to increase engagement on the platform. You're looking to engage your audience, to evangelize them, and really to be a source of information that they're returning to. Have you seen uh, the engagement on the platform increase since you started developing uh, changes, or is this this has yet to be uh, put out as a feature? Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of development of that. Um, so that uh, should launch by the end of October. We're we're well along. We've we've obviously worked very closely with SpecB on the designs, and uh, we're evaluating prototypes right now. But that that's that's coming. Uh, they're 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 actually working on two separate features for us. One of them is is that one, and and the other one is uh, uh, making searching Parkinson's research papers easier on our site. Um, they're working on a, they're working on a, basically a front end and a, um, an experience. So, uh, specific Parkinson's papers can be found again, this is just for researchers, but that's a, that's a huge thing for us too, that SpecB is helping us with. I think you're, you're highlighting that the, um, uh, the audience is, is diverse. You're not just looking at, uh, engaging, you know, donors, but also being able to serve researchers, 
uh, with useful information. Would you say the audience of your platform is split in a certain way between different personas? Yeah, absolutely. We we serve a lot of different uh, constituencies within the Parkinson's uh, community. Obviously, a, a very large one of those are people who want to be donors, people who are patients, people who are supporters, family members, caregivers. And then we also uh, serve very strongly, because it's very core to our mission, the uh, community of academic and industry researchers um, looking for cures and treatments to Parkinson's disease. And so they are two um, uh, significantly different personas, and that's, that's always kind of a challenge. How do we uh, direct one group in one direction, another group in the other direction? I think that that's something that we're, we're always uh, being careful of, and we're always dedicating development resources and thoughts to both sides of that. And with the disease, honestly, you probably have a lot of crossover. I bet there's a lot of caregivers and patients who are looking in the research user. So the interface almost needs to work for both audiences. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, I will argue sometimes that uh, when we inside the foundation talk about researchers, we're talking about professionals in the field. When a, when a, a person on the outside talks about researchers, they may consider themselves a researcher and they may understand research to be what they're doing, but they might only be a patient or a family member. Yeah. And so um, we do leave these tools open to both sides. Uh, we don't try to assume, no, this is only for a research audience. This is only for a patient audience. We don't, we don't make divisions around that. Kind of like I said before, we're not looking to gate the experience, but we are always trying to find ways to guide people to what they're truly seeking, what they truly need um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an easy as possible way. Right. And I just have a question for, for both of you, actually, and maybe we could start with Sean. How is your involvement in the open source community, how has this impacted your career and, and also your personal growth? Both of you are open source uh, enthusiasts, and I'd, I'd love to hear from both of you on how involvement in open source communities, how that's shaped you or how that's helped. Sure. I mean, I, I know open source principles. I'm, I'm aware of them. I've been, I've been involved in technology for, for decades. I don't know if I ever considered myself part of one community to, or, or the other, uh, at least until this project, at least until reaching out to organizations like SpecB and some of the others that we work with. Um, but I do think from that point forward, again, it's, it's given me personally, our organization also, access to a wealth of, of, uh, of knowledge that um, I really was not able to access from just working with specific companies or specific consultants that only worked with, you know, very proprietary products. And so I think it's expanded the scope of what I feel myself and my team are able to do at our organization. And again, uh, like I said, we're, we're not a software development house. Our main mission is not to produce better software. And so we're always trying to find ways to do the most with the resources that we have. Uh, and I think going in an open source direction, going with Drupal, the decisions we've made around our website, especially since we relaunched, have really facilitated that in a way that just was not possible with what we were doing before that. Great. Yeah. And for, for SpecB, I think, uh, I, I think for me personally, the thing I'm most proud of is, is how, how often we're contributors to, to, to Drupal. It's, there's anybody, if there's any time, we don't really have that much time that's, that's, that's just available for whatever, but any time that a developer has, has time in their day, um, whether they're done, they've got an extra hour here or there, uh, we try to contribute to Drupal. And we, ha we actually internally have contests for who contributed the most. Um, it's, it's really important for us to be able to contribute back to, back to the community. Um, or even developing some of our own stuff. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, an exciting time to be part of Drupal because we're seeing that growth everywhere. I mean, um, quick story, 
the uh, it, you know, the SPECB hasn't always been involved in like government type uh, projects. Um, I know they're out there for Drupal; it's pretty popular. But the just suddenly out of just the last six months to a year, I've, we're, we're getting contacted by government organizations like crazy uh, who were on something proprietary, like 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 uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation um, or something just older. Uh, and and we're ready to move. And it's Drupal is the the name of the game right now for that. And uh, it seems like uh, they're just it, it's I, I see the movements in the world happening just from day to day life. So the Michael J. Fox Foundation having the open science and open source um, commitment in their company, it's great that you did match up with SpecB because I know SpecB through Drupal Association and just what you said, they're certified partners, meaning they contribute code a lot. And so with that said, from any listeners out there, I wanted to ask Sean, when you were evaluating um, agencies to go with, was there a certain criteria that spec be matched or that you had specifically looking out there? Sure. A absolutely. And, and just for full disclosure, spec B is, is not the only organization that we're working with to main, maintain our, our Drupal site. Um, spec B is a, is a great partner. We're expanding our relationship with them. Um, but we also work with the company Lullabot on our maintenance level tasks. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, and they're a very important part of this too, but spec B is, a uh, Right now, definitely our go-to organization for when we're working on projects, when we're adding features and functionality to the website, uh, and and it's been a, a really great partnership. Um, the criteria I put together when we uh, started sourcing different uh, Drupal-focused organizations is first and foremost, I wanted a, a, a company, I wanted a group that focused on Drupal software the Drupal community, they were making significant contributions to Drupal core and modules. I really, I put that into our RFP. That was important to me. I didn't want um, an organization that may be strong, but didn't have a commitment to Drupal to the extent that, um, you know, SpecB does. It really is their focus, right? So that was, that was right on top. After that, um, I really wanted a group with, or a company with strong local project management. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with outsourcing and overseas resources. And I think that they do really great work, but I do think that when there's a disconnect between an overseas group and the customer, things can go awry, things can uh, not be communicated properly. And so I really needed a group that I felt confident really had that model down pat. And, and, uh, and like I said, I really think SpecB is, is one of those companies. And then I, I also wanted, there were um, a couple of other things. I also wanted a, a, a consistent technology team that was accessible. I didn't want to feel like I was putting um, requests into a black box and then software came out of it. I wanted to have the opportunity not to, not to manage their development cycle, but to access it if we really needed to have a conversation. And um, then, you know, I, I wanted the same thing with the leadership of these companies. Again, it's, it's not our practice to be constantly communicating with developers, constantly communicating with the CEO. Nevertheless, though, I didn't want them to be invisible. I wanted to meet them, know them, interact with them if I felt I needed to. Um, and and have them uh, you know know us as a client. So that was all very important. And then beyond that, good references. Uh, I wanted to hear some stories about what happens when things go wrong, and and see what's said because we all know things go wrong all the time. And and so I I want to know how an organization that I'm working with handles that. Um, and again, these were the types of things that were all coming through gold stars for SpecB. Um, you know, what led me in the first place to even discover them was doing some research in the Drupal community, looking at information was out there, a lot of web searches, a lot of considerations on how the company presents itself. Jim's blogs posts are uh, were a huge advantage, right? It's very different yeah. just going to your website and saying, hey, we're great, and me taking your word for it, or me actually being able to 
kind of, you know, scrutinize what's really going on there through how they're representing themselves. So, so they were very, very strong in that. Lullabot also very strong in that. And we decided um, at the time our, our best choice was not to limit ourselves to one partner. We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket, but to make decisions really based around the principles that I'm talking about. And I, and I think we made some good ones. Yeah, that is, first of all, really nice to say, Sean. But also, you nailed, you nailed what our podcast is about, which is, which is uh, effing up. So <laughs> right. the Spec B podcast. occasionally, yeah, the Spec B podcast, we do one uh, about, about those mistakes and, and learning from them. And, and that is, uh, I think that's a key thing because um, I think what makes us work so well, Sean, is that there's trust and trust is nearly the, one of the most important pieces of this, because you need to be able to trust that, that we're going to take things seriously or that we're going to take your requirements and really think through them and not just cut corners. Um, because then it, the output suffers, even though we might've gotten all the requirements done, the output suffers in the end, either from, uh, you know, maybe it makes Lullabot hard. It makes it harder for Lullabot to maintain it because it's not, it's not properly put together. Um, so there's that, that kind of stuff builds over time. Um, but yeah, we certainly appreciate, um, everything that Sean and Michael J. Fox foundation does. And, and I am a huge, uh, supporter of Michael J. Fox foundation for so many reasons. Uh, and I, I, every day I'm proud to be working with them. And if anyone asks who our, who our client is, I always say, the first one I always say is Michael J. Fox Foundation. Sean knows that because I bring it up every time. <laughs> That's great. I think, I think we had a question about what advice you would offer to nonprofits or organizations looking to leverage the Drupal community for support and collaboration. You talked a little bit about the evaluation process, Sean, that you went through selecting SpecB. Um, and Lullaba as well. Um, what advice would you give to nonprofits or orgs who are looking to, you know, start up um, a Drupal engagement? Uh, where do they begin? What resources are available? What helped you? Um, the only advice I can really give is is just the way I go about things, and and that is to familiarize yourself with the community and the marketplace as much as possible even before you start reaching out to organizations. Don't, don't start conversations with salespeople, start conversations with yourself. What do you really need? What do you need now? What do you need in the long term? What does your organization need? And so, you know, go into it knowing something about, um, knowing something about, again, the community, the market, whatever technology that you're, you're choosing, um, be well informed, before you start making those calls, right? Uh, beyond that, uh, like, I, like I said before, um, look for organizations that you feel strongly match the way you work, your team works. Um, they're, going to, they're going to work in, we happen to work agile and in agile cycles. We're not 100% in lockstep with, with Jin's group, but still, they're still... Uh, we operate with a with an idea of of quick changes, um, and small iterations, and and innovation. And I think you know SpecB is representative of a company that really does that. If we worked with an organization that was that was very very strict and had all of the needs and everything spelled out 100% beforehand before proceeding on a project, I don't know if that would work well with how our organization works. So look for an organization that matches that matches the way your organization works. Um, and also, don't make decisions entirely based around cost, um, especially with software of this type. I mean, open source software is free, right? That's got to be, that's got to be the best choice. No, you know, the, the real cost isn't some of the things that we're talking about in actually building and actually, in actually configuring, iterating, supporting over time. Um, understand the true costs of those things and understand the true difference with working with one organization that, for example, might have one cost structure based around how they, you know, source their engineering staff versus another organization, which has a different cost structure based around how they source their staff, you know, understand that it's not just simply a $60 an hour versus a $200 an hour conversation understand what those costs go into 
um, and and make your decision on the understanding, not necessarily on the the bottom line number. So, um, and and that's about it. That's that's generally how I look at working with most outside organizations, whether they be proprietary vendors or whether they are involved in the open source community. It's it's really around principles like that. Don't don't go in uninformed. Great advice. That's good. To add to that, if you're evaluating, looking for an organization like SpecB that does contribute, Drupal.org is a good place to go uh, that SpecB is listed and to find some other organizations. Lots of good ones. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Great. I think I just have, if I may, I just had one more question for Jim. You mentioned that SpecB is all in on Drupal. That's what we do. That's all we do. Why? Um, I mean, beyond the idea that Drupal is uh, a platform that we just love and, and we're, that 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 we are invested in, um, and is well supported by other by other organizations. I mean, that's you know, if we are the only ga- player in the game. That's you know, how do you really? Uh, I guess the the commercial nature of of uh, of everybody competing to do something better is that's that's part of the open source community, right? Um, Beyond that, for for us, I think the reality is that when you specialize in something, you know, they they always add, I don't want to say the riches are in the niches because that's not what it's about, but it's got the same type of dynamic here. When you can only focus on one thing, when we're bringing in people who are junior developers and training them from from you know maybe a couple years out of school, um, and they're only learning Drupal and best practices Drupal, that's the key, right? If you can learn, if you, if we're teaching best practices Drupal, um, we're developing people who also grow to love Drupal and will be hopefully one day, even if they're not with spec, be wonderful contributors. But we're we're building this community, not only with the rest of the world, but also internally. So we think of it as a little bit as a little internal open source community uh, that is that that's our own little engine. Um, but if we brought in other other uh, other platforms or other focuses. Uh, I've been in, in, I've worked at agencies that, that do that before. I, I think you lose that focus and that drive. And, and I think it, it creates uh, bad habits for some developers when, when that happens, but if they start playing another, another CMS, it's just because Drupal has such a, a way to be built. Uh, and especially over the last, last few years, um, we see it all the time. And not to say that anybody's doing bad work out there that does m- multiple types of, of, of CMSs, but um you know, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of shops out there that uh, that are that are having trouble finding uh, some developers, and and so they just choose one way or the other. Now, I think in the end, what's happening is that you're getting this a lot of Drupal focused agencies and a lot of the other CMS is focused going the other way. So the ones that kind of dabbled in everything, I don't know if that's the world we live in anymore. Um, but I, and, and I'm going off on tangents, Nathan, so I'll cut no, myself that's, off. But. I, hey, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think that's, we, we wanted to learn a little bit about why that's... this distinct focus. I think you answered that. You answered that well. So great. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we thank you. I mean, Spec B, we love working with you. Thank you for c- your contribution and for introducing us to the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research. It was good to meet you, Sean, and see you again, Jim. Thanks, Happy guys. to be very here. proud. Thanks, Kelly. Thank Thanks, Nathan. John. Thanks so much. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Jim. Thank All you. Right. And if you, the audience, would like to be on the show, email me at partnerships at association.drupal.org. Mm-hmm.